Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to see your face. Good morning. Good morning to you. Riley. Good morning, Riley. <laughs> Good morning, Riley. How's it going? You're going to be alone for some of today, buddy. Because today it is surgery day for me. Me? Hey? You pretty boy. Oh, I hear those purrs. <laughs> Good morning guys. It is Monday, February the 26th and we got up at 6 a.m. and it is now 6.25 so I just have to quickly get myself dressed and we'll be heading out soon to the hospital. Now Alex is saying right now with the way traffic is he's saying it's only going to take us 17 minutes to get there which would be way too early but he's saying that because it's a weekday morning um work traffic could start up in like about 10 minutes and then the time could increase so i don't know what time we're going to be leaving but um probably soon and um i will check in i guess when we get there um and then when i go in to get the procedure done i'm hoping to hand off this camera to alex with my bag of other stuff that I have um and then hopefully he can kind of take over any filming when um he's able to come in and see me afterwards um to get ready to go home um that's my plan so anyways I will check in when we get to the hospital and things start getting ready or the ball starts rolling <laughs> And hopefully everything goes well. I really didn't sleep well at all because I was just like nervous and just hoping that everything goes okay. Um, so, and also my jaw was really, really sore last night to the point of giving me a headache. And look at this little guy here. What are you doing? Do you want belly rubs or something? Hey? Yeah, I bet. Oh, hey, you don't want a belly rub? Okay, I'll just pet you like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, um, I had my heating pad on my face for like half the night. And was just trying to get comfortable and whatever. Anyways, we'll check in later. Hey guys, so it's Tuesday now. It's the next day. I completely failed at vlogging the day no it's just it was just the way that it went that um this was a different hospital that I had it done at this time and they did not allow filming um when they took me into the area to get prepped for surgery um <clears throat> it was different than when I had it done at Sunnybrook um when I had the procedure done at Sunnybrook, I got my own little room during the prep and also afterwards for recovery, which was really nice because when they took me to the little room after recovery, um, because it was my own little room, and I mean little, it was like closet small, but at least I was by myself and had privacy and there was a door that I could close and I could and they were able to turn off the lights and let me sleep for a while after the procedure um but at this particular hospital it's a smaller hospital um so in the sense of it being a smaller hospital it was better in that there was less patients and so the staff was very you know, they were there for you if you needed them kind of thing. Um, very available, I guess I could say. Um, so that was great. 
Um, but when we, when they took us into that area to get me ready for surgery, there was like a big sign on the door that said no photography or videography unless you have prior consent. So, I mean, I guess I could have asked for some sort of consent, but Alex and I kind of both agreed that it didn't seem appropriate just because, like for me personally, I would only have wanted to vlog if we could have privacy and it was there was no privacy. So it was very, I would say it was almost like an ER room. Um in that it was just a big open room with a bunch of beds and there was only like curtains separating the beds. I mean, yeah, I guess we could have closed the curtains to have privacy to film if we wanted, but they didn't seem to really want people closing the curtains at that point because the nurses were kind of coming and going to check on things. So, and then, so what happened actually was I got in, they had me change into the whole hospital gown, those lovely paper booties that they have. Um, and then I was supposed to go and sit where a, a bunch of other patients were sitting in front of a TV on these chairs, but there was no seats available. So they just assigned me to a bed right away, um, which was kind of nice. I got to put my feet up and just relax on the bed. Um, so they took me in at 7.30 to start or just actually, I think it was like 7.25 um, to start getting me ready. And so I think I waited, after I changed, I waited about an hour on the bed. Um, and then they finally came and started um, doing like my vitals. You know, they checked my temperature, my blood pressure, my breathing, all that kind of stuff. My oxygen level, my pulse things like that, um, <clears throat> and went over all of my allergies again, went over all of my medications again. Um, they gave me an allergy bracelet, and I had to take off my hospital, or my medic alert bracelet, because bracelet, you can't wear any jewelry in the OR, um, and that. So that was good, and... Um, then after that, I just got to relax a bit and they were waiting to hear back from the doctor because when I went to my pre-op, they did blood work and I was actually really shocked at how fast they were able to get the blood work back. Like it was within a half hour to an hour they had my blood work results, but they forgot to run um, the blood work on my creatine levels, which is to check my kidneys. Um, and so they called back the lab, the lab still had my blood and they were supposed to then run the creatine check that day so that it would be in by Monday. Um, but it wasn't in. And so they were waiting to see if they needed to draw that blood work and run that. Um, but they never did. So I guess everything was fine. I, they didn't really need it. Um, but they were waiting on that. So she did get my IV put in while I was waiting um, so that they wouldn't have to do that in the OR. Um, but she didn't hook up anything to the IV. It was just there to be accessed. Um, and then we just waited and I was supposed to have my procedure done at 9.35, but they didn't take me down there till 10, um, around 10 a.m. And so Alex got to go part of the way with me and then once they were ready to take me into the OR area, then he obviously couldn't go with me. Um, so what was really good about this time is I didn't have to have a breathing tube down my nose. They were able to intubate me through my mouth and so I was completely put to sleep before they did that. So I didn't have to experience any discomfort like I did the last time and I didn't have to worry about a nosebleed happening cause nothing went down my nose. So that was amazing. Um, so when they took me into the OR, the OR was freezing. I was like shivering immediately. 
Um, they put a warm blanket on me, but they had to have my arms out on these tables on both sides because one was to access my IV and one was to check my blood pressure. So my arms were exposed and I was freezing. Um, and then they gave me an oxygen mask, um, I guess before into like just to help like until I was asleep and then they were able to intubate me and I obviously didn't need the oxygen mask at that point because I had a breathing tube um so that was good and <clears throat> and they also had said that they were going to inject some sort of muscle relaxers in my face as well for intubation um I don't know where they did that I don't know I don't see any marks I don't know if they went in the same area as my injections for the surgery I don't really know but I was asleep <laughs> then that was all that matters like honestly I don't even I barely remember anything I remember them after they put my oxygen mask on I remember them saying they were going to give me nausea anti-nausea medication in my IV and I, I remember feeling that go in and then I don't really remember anything after that I don't know they must have like just put me out at that point because I just I don't remember anything um so then I went after the surgery which is like about 40 minutes 45 minutes they took me to recovery and in the recovery room again the recovery room was just a bunch of beds so there was no privacy there either it was just a bunch of beds and um I'm trying to remember. I was like very out of it. Like they, they bring you there and they wake you up there. And then I was just kind of like in and out, um, like trying to sleep half awake, half asleep, very loopy. Um, and they just basically were like keeping a sign or keeping, uh, an eye on my vitals like they had the heart monitors on me and everything like that and I remember one thing was that I felt really weird like I don't remember feeling this way before after a surgery so I don't know if my lung and heart issues were kind of playing into this but my chest felt very weird with my bre breathing like, and I had a very fluttery feeling in my heart. Like I could feel my extra heartbeats coming and a very weird sensation in my chest. And my hands and feet were kind of tingly and my legs and arms felt very heavy. Um, and then as I started to wake up a little more, then I could feel some pain in my jaw and pressure like a lot of pressure in my ears like a popping sensation in my ears um a bit of a sharp pain in my left ear um and um every now and then they would come over to me and ask me to take some deep breaths and I could hear the heart monitor or machine or whatever was like making a lot of beeping. So I have a feeling either my oxygen was dropping or my extra heartbeats were coming on or something. One of those things because they would tell, come over and say, take some deep breaths. And so I would, and then the beeping would stop and they would say, okay, you're fine. Um, then uh, they, you know, they asked me how I was feeling and I don't know why I didn't tell them about my hands and feet and my legs and all those weird feelings I was feeling. I guess in my mind, I just kind of thought it just had to do with the anesthesia and it would wear off. And like, I was so out of it too, that it was hard for me to think clearly in what to tell them. So the only thing that I did tell them was about the pain um, because I knew something could be done about that. So then they said, okay, we'll, um, give you some pain meds through your IV. Again, it was like in my mind, I wanted to ask what pain meds they were going to give, but it was like, I couldn't formulate that into words. Like I was just so out of it. 
um, because I didn't want morphine because I, before when I went to the ER with the pericarditis, they gave me morphine and it made me sick. So, um, so I did not want that, but when they gave me the medication, I kind of got that feeling in my body that I got when I got morphine. So I'm thinking they maybe did give me morphine. I don't really know. Um, and I didn't ask, but I was kind of, I don't know, I was in and out and just not really with it. And then I remember, um, as I was kind of dozing off and on, I heard like an elderly man a few beds down from me. He kept asking the nurse like every five to 10 minutes, he kept asking the nurse if the doctor had called his wife and the nurse had to keep answering the same thing like every five to 10 minutes. And I remember like laying there and in my head, I was thinking, man, like this nurse has patience. Like and this poor man just keeps asking the same question every five to 10 minutes. And I was like, I found it kind of funny, but, um, yeah, and then the one thing that I did notice, like, and you can probably notice right now, is my voice is fine. Um, it was a little bit raspy when I came out, like, when I was in the recovery room. And my throat was sore. And my throat is still kind of scratchy, which they said is from the tube. Um, but I didn't lose my voice. So that's another positive. Because uh, the last time I lost my voice for, like, three days straight, which is why I couldn't vlog or anything. Um, but I didn't lose my voice. So I was happy about that. Um, so then I guess I was in recovery about an hour and they, then they took me, they took me back to the initial area where I was. And that's where Alex was able to come in with me. Um, but them roll like the movement from them rolling the stretcher from the recovery to the other room made me nauseous. Um, I immediately, by the time I got back to the other room, I felt so nauseous. And so I told the nurse and she gave me gravel through the IV. And then Alex came in and I'd say he was with me about five minutes. And I said to him, I think I might throw up. So <clears throat> he went to the nurse to get one of those like pan things and she came over and she put a cold cloth on my forehead. Um, and I just kind of, I, it passed. Thankfully I didn't throw up. Um, it passed. And so I just kind of laid back and just closed my eyes and just rested. She got me some ginger ale to sip on and that seemed to help. Um, but I was very, very dizzy. Um, so anyways, I, I don't know how long we were in that other room for, maybe two hours before I was able to go home because they didn't want to rush me home if I didn't feel ready. Um, they just said that the dizziness and the nausea is to be expected from the anesthesia and whatnot. And also, like I said, if they gave me morphine, that probably contributed to the nausea. Um but they gave me a bag to take in the car with me in case I needed to throw up in the car, which thankfully the car ride home was okay. I was really worried about the car ride home making me sick. And I actually managed to sleep most of the way home. So that was great. So we left, I don't know what time it was that we left. Um, but I guess we got home around 3.30 in the afternoon. And when we got, shortly after we got home, I bolted to the bathroom thinking I was going to throw up again, but it passed. So I got my pajamas on and I remembered that we had some Zofran left here at the house. So I took a, did I take a Zofran right away? No, I didn't take a Zofran right away because... I knew that they had just given me anti-nausea meds at the hospital. So I just went to bed um, and just kind of slept for a few hours and 
I, my sleep was very weird on and off. And like, even in the, after the recovery room, when they took me to the other room, they occasionally kept telling me to take deep breaths. So I must've been having issues with my oxygen or whatever. And, um, they even told me like, when you go home, remember to take a lot of deep breaths. So when I would try to sleep, as I would start to like doze off, I would be jolted awake for some reason. And I, and then I would feel something weird in my chest. And so I would take some deep breaths. So I was having a lot of trouble sleeping, but I tried for like a few hours and I managed to get a little bit of sleep. And Alex went and filled my prescription for Tylenol 3 for um, pain. And he got some ginger ale and stuff like that. So, um, then I don't know, I guess it was like around 5 PM or so I came out on the couch, watched a little TV and tried to have some chicken broth. And I got a few sips in and started to feel queasy and nauseous. So I took a Zofran and then about 10 minutes after I took Zofran, I threw up. So thankfully, I read online, like if you throw up within 30 minutes of taking Zofran, then you can take another one because you're basically throwing up the dose. So I took another dose and I just let it settle before I tried having any more chicken broth. Um, and then thankfully, when I finally decided, okay, I feel a little bit better, I think I'm going to have some chicken broth now, it stayed down. So that was good. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I ended up, I think I just kind of dozed on and off throughout the evening. I watched a little bit of TV here and there, and then I finally just called it a night at like 10 o'clock or something. I went to bed and I really didn't sleep well at all because throughout the evening or throughout the night, the pain started to get a lot worse in my jaw and in my ear. And I was having trouble sleeping on my side because putting pressure on the jaw it was hurting. Um, so I just didn't sleep very well. And But my stomach started to feel okay. But I just didn't sleep well. And so finally, at I think it was like 4 o'clock in the morning, I got up, I went to the washroom, and I decided to take some more Tylenol 3. And Alex had been just giving me one pill, but I noticed on the pill bottle, it said you could take one to two tablets. And my pain was so bad at this point. I was like, screw it. I'm going to take two this time and see how that works for me. Um, so I did that and... I, I don't know, like the last time I had this surgery done, um, the pain wasn't that bad. It was, it wasn't really any different than the pain I was having in my jaw before surgery. So like the last time I barely had to take any pain meds, but this time it's a little different. Unfortunately, um, the pain's a lot worse. So, um, I took the two Tylenol at 4 a.m. this morning and then I just stayed up till like about five o'clock I was just like on my phone then at five o'clock I took my regular everyday meds and because I was starting to get heartburn and I didn't know if that was from taking two Tylenol threes or what but I have um low sec that I take every day to prevent heartburn so I thought okay if I take this up five hopefully it'll help didn't really help. Um, I tried to go back to sleep. I ended up getting up at six and just coming out on the couch and watching Ellen. Um, and before Alex went to work, he got me some ginger ale and an insurer. And I ended up, um, I ended up just sipping on the ginger ale for a while. And then I decided to just take um, another low sec, uh, because I believe I had heard 
from my doctor that I can up the dose if I need it. So I just decided to take another one and then that seemed to settle the heartburn within like a half hour. So then I felt that I could have some Ensure. So I had, I had an Ensure and that stayed down, which was great. And then, yeah, so I watched Ellen and Dr. Phil. And then during Dr. Phil, I started to get really groggy. And I was falling asleep, so I just decided to turn off the TV. And I slept a bit here on the couch. And then just decided to go to the bedroom around 10. No, it wasn't even... It was like around eight or nine. I don't remember. I th no, actually, I think I went to the bedroom around 10. But I slept on the couch from like eight or nine until 10. Um, so I went to back to the bedroom at 10 and didn't get up until one. I actually was able to sleep a bit better and eventually the Tylenol did kick in and actually I've been feeling pretty good ever since then. So like I'd say I started to feel the pain going away around 10 when I went to the bedroom and I was actually able to sleep on my side pretty comfortably and slept on and off until like one when Alex texted me and then I've kind of been up ever since then. I had another Ensure that has like high protein in it. And right now I'm just slowly having one of these mango, apple, carrot, and peach baby food things. But when I when I finished, after I finished my Ensure, I kind of started to feel a little bit nauseous. And I don't know if it's just because I haven't really eaten much or if it's actual nausea, but I took another gra ginger gravel I've got some ginger ale and that's why I'm just kind of slowly sipping on the baby food thing, not to rush it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically it. Um, I still am a little bit dizzy, which is from the anesthesia. Um, so I've just been taking it easy today and sleeping a lot and, um, just slowly trying to eat, which I can't actually eat. It's just I can only do liquids right now, stuff that you can drink. But at least this baby food thing feels a little more substantial. <laughs> like it has, you know, a thickness to it. So it feels like actual food. But um, it's, um, it's really nice and sunny out today. And it's supposed to be like 12 Celsius out, which is really warm. But I can't go out and enjoy it, unfortunately. And Riley is sleeping here with me um so yeah that's what's going on that's the update um just taking it easy as you can see I don't know if you can see on the camera but um I have like pen marks on my face near my eyes because I think they mark it there and then they put the injections. I looked uh, online actually, I got to see pictures of where they do the, cause they use two needles. So they put one needle in, um, which flushes the joints with saline and then the other needle takes the saline out. And then after they do that, then they go and inject with cortisone. So there's two, so you can see, I still have my bandages on. I haven't taken them off yet. I think I could probably take them off soon though. Cause I think the last time I took them off, like the next day when I showered. So I'm, I don't know if I'll feel up to showering tonight, but if I do, I'll take them off then. Um, but yeah, my hair is kind of like all messed up from laying on it and from having the cloth on my forehead. And then I had like some crusty stuff in my hair at the hospital. I don't know if it was like dried up blood or solution. So, I mean, I do need to shower, but I just, because I'm still kind of dizzy, I don't want to, I don't feel like doing that right now. Um, but yeah, so there's pen marks and then there's the bandages. And then I have some blood, dried up blood in my ears and I don't know if you can see it. I don't even know if I'm filming 
that. <laughs> I really need to get a new camera that has like a screen so I can see what I'm filming. That's my goal. I need to save up for that this year. Um, I want a new camera. Anyways, um, so that's it. Uh, and my ears still kind of feel like they're popping and have some pressure in them. If that continues on in the next few days, I think I might go and see, either go and see my family doctor or just call like a house call doctor to come and look at my ears because I read online that one of the complications of this surgery, it's rare, but you can get like blood clots in your ears. And so you have to get some kind of a solution to help with that. So I'm going to keep my eye on it. Um, my ears, from what I can tell, haven't bled anymore. And I don't even know if the blood that's in my ears came out of my ears or if it just ran from where they put the needles in. Like, I don't know if it just ran into my ears. But I know when I was in recovery, it felt like something was trickling out of this ear. So I... I don't really know. Like, I don't know. I haven't been able to find anywhere online if bleeding, like if you can bleed from the ear from this or if it's just blood. Like I've Googled it and I can't find any info. The only info I found was the risk of a blood clot. So, um, so yeah, I don't, I don't really know with that, but Anyways, that's it. I think I'm going to sign off on this video now because um, right now, like, the more I talk, the more nauseous I feel sometimes. But my stomach is also really growling. <laughs> so I'm going to try to finish off this baby food. And I want to watch the new episode of Teen Mom OG. And, yeah, I feel kind of more alert now that I've had some good sleep. So I think I'll probably stay up for a little while but I'm just basically taking it easy and listening to my body when I feel tired I sleep and when I feel like getting up I get up and that's what I'm gonna do and um so yeah all right guys well that's my update and I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't vlog the whole experience like I wanted to but like I said it just we weren't allowed to film there and even if we were, it was just not the kind of environment I'd want to film in because it was so open. And I didn't want to make anyone else in that room uncomfortable if I had my camera out or whatever. But um, if you follow me on Instagram, I posted a couple of pictures, like two pictures of me when I was waiting to go into surgery. And I'll just tap them on the end of this video for those who don't follow me on Instagram. Um, but yeah. So, my lips are really, really dry, too. So, I think I need to put some stuff on that. It's probably from sleeping a lot and from, like, when I was put out. But, anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. And I have only been able to give hearts to your comments just because I don't have, like, right now I just don't have, um... The capacity to answer all of your comments on my videos I've just been giving you guys hearts um, but I truly appreciate all the prayers and all the um, good thoughts and wishes coming my way so thank you so much for that and um, I, I just want to let you know I do read all of your comments I just right now like the way I'm feeling I just don't I can't type out responses to everyone um I hope you understand but yeah I've given heart to all of your comments because I truly appreciate them so thanks guys and I'll keep you updated we'll see you in the next video bye <music>